Okay, we're back here. Now, we're going to create the router first because that's the main machine that connects to everything else that links all the machines together in order for the network to actually work. So the biggest priority right now is creating the PFSense router. Now, in order to create the PFSense router, you have to download it. PFSense is open source, so it's free. It's public, it's available to anyone. And it's very easy to set up also. So I'll be showing you how to do that first. Okay, so we're here at the PFSense webpage. So we can head over to downloads and then install the computer architecture. You select AMD 64, platform, CD image. And then you select your location. I live in New York, so I'll click that. And then you wait for it to download. Once it's finished, we'll get back. Okay, so we have the ISO here that we downloaded. We have to actually extract it. So we'll wait for that to extract. It will only take a few seconds. Okay. So in this folder, we have the ISO here. This is basically the operating system. The file consists of the entire operating system. So think of it as another version of Windows, Windows whatever. You're basically installing an operating system on a virtual machine. So now let's head back to the virtual box. All right, so once you finish downloading PFSense, we want to build the machine on the virtual box manager. So we'll start from scratch. I know I've created the machines here, but let's set up a new group just for this test purposes. So you click new here and we'll call this PFSense. And you have to select BSD here. And then because PFSense is actually built off of FreeBSD, you have to select FreeBSD here. I'll go with 64-bit because I can handle it. If not, go with 32. Click Next. And we'll give it around 512 MB of RAM. Routers don't really need that much RAM. For hard disk, just go with Create a Virtual Hard Disk Now. And then when it asks for the file type, select VDI. Storage on physical hard disk. So this can be dynamically allocated. So what this means is that it will basically allocate as much as needed instead of a fixed size. So this will really help in terms of conservation. Okay, so here is the file location and size. So this is basically how much hard disk virtual size you want it to be. So we're not going to be putting that much into the PFSense. So we'll go with two gigs. Okay, so as you can see, we created the new PFSense router here machine. Now this by itself doesn't have anything because we have to actually install the ISO that we previously downloaded from the website. So just to make things a little bit more organized, we can set this to a separate group for testing purposes. So you can click group here, and then you can right click here and rename. And we'll just call this test. Okay, so test is gonna be composed of the machines that are on the LAN side. So not the DMZ side, we'll be creating a separate group for that. So PFSense here, okay. So we go to settings here, and then for storage, click empty, and then you wanna click this button here. Basically this imports the operating system into the virtual machine here. So choose virtual optical disk, the file. So here, which is PFSense, you see the ISO that we previously extracted is here. So we click it. And OK. OK, now that we have imported 
the operating system into the PFSense virtual machine, we also have to do something else. We have to go to network here and we set bridged connection. And then you choose your whatever adapter name that you're actually using for the internet. So mine is Intel Wireless. This is what I'm using to connect to the internet as of now on my actual computer. What this will do is it will bridge the adapter into the virtual machine. If you have access on your actual machine, you will also have access using the same type of internet, the adapter here for the internet. You also have to create a second adapter here and we'll enable this and you have to call it internal network. Now what this is, it's a virtual local network. So you can call this whatever you want, but this adapter will act as the LAN. So we can call this perhaps LAN. And then we also have to create a third adapter for the DMZ. So this will also be a internal network and we'll call this DMZ. Now, once you have all three adapters set up, click OK. OK, now we're ready to proceed in actually opening the PFSense in order to configure and install the operating system. So we can click start here. OK, once it's boot up here, press one in order to boot it up and it will automatically install the operating system. It's going to take a while. So, okay. So once it says here, you have to press I before it reaches the counter. Okay. So once you're at this display right here, you want to accept these settings and then do a quick, easy install. When it asks you, are you sure? Click OK or press enter. You can't really click here. And we'll get back to here once it's done. OK, now when it asks you, you may now wish to install a custom kernel configuration. Press standard, enter. OK, now when it asks you to reboot, enter. It tells you the actual username and password. This is what you'll be using in order to access the GUI on a Windows server or a client machine. In order to access the PFSense, you have to use those credentials. Those are the default credentials. Okay, so once you have everything installed, you want to go to optical drive over here in order to remove the disk from the virtual drive. Because if you don't remove it, it will keep running this install machine and it will just be an endless loop. So you have to remove it right here. Click remove and force amount. Now, once it's remount, you want to reset. So machine, reset. And over here, you just press F1 and it should start. And you press one here and we'll get back to here when it's done. Okay, we're back here. So this is, it's what you will see once you have everything PFSense installed. This is PFSense. Now you might look at it, it looks kind of confusing and all, but most of the time you won't be using this in order to configure firewalls, but usually you would want to use the GUI in which you want to be on a client machine or maybe as an admin, you want to be on a server and you type in the address of the PFSense router and then you access the GUI there in order to configure firewalls or install applications, install IDS, Snort, any of that, you have to, you should use the GUI instead of this because if you mess with this, it's going to get really complicated. And usually you want to reset to factory settings using this. That's the only time that you want to 
Now, what we want to do is we have to assign the DMZ interface because as you can see, we created three adapters. One was the bridged one, which is for the WAN, and one was the internal network for the LAN, and one was also for the DMZ, which is also internal network, but it's not shown here. In order to see that, we have to use the GUI. And in order to do that, we have to set up a server that connects to the PFSense. So that's our next step. We have already configured the PFSense and everything is set up here. So let's proceed.